Hey guys, what's up? We've talked about this before. Space is the biggest killer in terms of designing a room like this, in terms of getting all your stuff, in terms of doing what you want to do. And it just so happens that that's, that's what this video is going to be about. This video is going to talk about space again because it is the never-ending topic for situations in terms of collecting. So let's get down to it. So what's going on exactly? Well, there's still a lot more to do. Everything from unboxing characters like this, adding her to the shelf. We also have all of this stuff and not all of it necessarily needs to be here because let's be honest, there are a couple of items on the shelf that are due to go. They no longer belong here. They don't serve a purpose. They're not a meaningful part of my collection. And we've talked about this before. When I, when I collect, when anybody collects, my personal, my personal opinion, when anybody collects, the collection should mean something to them. Every piece should be an important part of your personality or your interest in some way that pushes you forward in terms of the collection. And just like we change all the time. The collection is due to change all the time. There are multiple shelves here. Everything from an anime shelf to uh, Marvel shelves to comic book things to random assortments to video games. And not every single item has earned its keep necessarily. Case in point. Check right here. This is the anime shelf, and not all of it necessarily deserves to stay. Two items in particular are ready to go. What two items in particular? Well, that would be these. It's time for them to go. Uh, I got into Fate Stay Night back a couple of years ago. I saw one anime. And then after I saw the anime, I picked up a game. It was a type of Dynasty Warriors-esque game, which was pretty fun and kind of gave me an insight, a quick view insight into Fate Stay Night. I was interested. Interested enough that the next anime con I went to, I talked to a couple of fans. And without meaning to, I picked up on their hype. That's really what happened here. Those two fans were super interested. They were super excited. I kind of got excited. We started talking about it. I talked about how I was new. They talked about how they were big long-term fans. And before I knew it, I'd walked out of the con with two figures. And I thought they were pretty good statues. I thought they were cool. And they are, for what it's worth. But then later on, a couple of weeks later, I tried to watch more Fate Stay Night. And while I don't hate it, it's a little too confusing necessarily for me. It's fast and loose with its continuity and it's all over the place and I don't necessarily know where the story is going at that time. And I started realizing that I wasn't following a narrative that I necessarily enjoyed. So, turns out, I wasn't as big a fan as I thought. Understandable. And I also started to notice that some of the games, which I'm, from what I understand, that's where they started, was these narrative games. They were interesting, to say the least. The kinds of games they were. I was not expecting that. That's what I'm going to say. I was not expecting what those games were. I'm not against it, but I wasn't expecting it. And all of a sudden everything come down to it. Those two items really just take up space on the anime shelf at this point. They don't really mean anything to me, but there's more. Here is the Marvel shelf, the Marvel comic book shelf. And right here is Spider-Gwen. And I like Spider-Gwen. I legit do. I have read three different runs all the way through of Spider-Gwen, and I have enjoyed this character's design and this character's take. But, that being said, I like this design. 
I love this design. I'm really into this right here in the back. And I don't mind her at all. It's cutesy, it's fun, it's fine. This all seems to work for me. But going down here, we come across another shelf. That being the Rangers. And there's an item on the Ranger shelf that's a little bit out of place because it was just too big. And she no longer belongs here. This was a purchase made because I was excited. She is really cool. And I mean that. She is a solid piece. She is a very solid piece. I'm trying to get her in focus here. I liked this. Uh, we're just going to pull back on her. I thought that this was an absolutely astonishing piece when I picked it up. I really did. And I still think that it's sculpted very nicely. It's made out of a very fine resin material. It's nice. It has a decent face and everything like that. But to me, personally, it feels a little too grown up. And the hair feels almost like it's from a different universe in terms of the Spider-Gwen that I've currently been reading. It just doesn't feel right. Now, that being said, I still have the box. I still have the number. I still have the certificate and everything to this piece. And this piece is fairly rare. It rates anywhere from $100 to, I've seen them go as high as $230. Now, I'm not trying to put a monetary value on my collection either. Understand that. Every now and then I'll mention a price, but I will admit that prices date your collection. They date your collection and they date your videos because the way that these items work, normally the value of these items goes up and down like a roller coaster. And that's because the collection market in general is somewhat fickle and collectors are somewhat fickle. And sometimes if there's a new comic line out, new show out, new movie out, these things will skyrocket. And sometimes if they're not, you do not, you do not have the pop culture behind you and these items will plummet hard. So I'm not trying to put a monetary value on it. I'm simply saying that right now, her value is high enough that I can part with her and somebody will get enjoyment out of her. Now, keep in mind, this is not a reflection of me not necessarily liking Spider-Gwen. It's no longer being a fan of that piece. When I bought it, I bought it because I was just getting into Spider-Gwen. It was a very significant piece and it had some good monetary value in it. And I didn't have very many high-class resin statues in my collection. I was very new to buying statues. It was one of the first ones I ever bought, one of the first ones that I ever truly invested in, and I wanted it to be a good one, so I spent the money to get a good one. Now that I have it, and I've had it for a while, I'm not necessarily excited to keep it in my collection, and that happens from time to time. The more you buy items, the more you invest into your collection. Space is always a limited thing, and we've always got to look into getting rid of things that no longer stand in the collection. This is going to be my next major step in terms of a lot of this stuff. I need to go through this entire collection over probably the next week or so, and I really need to start breaking it down. I need to take a lot of things off the shelf because I have four boxes of material that's due to go up on this shelf. Everything from Spider-Man figures to Wolverines to X-Men class things to Green Lanterns to Star Wars figures, a bunch of different stuff that really deserves to be on the shelf that I simply have never unpacked. And I also have a couple of items that need to go, they need to be hung up. I have a couple of interesting items in my Ranger collection that do not go on the shelf because they kind of can't. Weapons, things like Saba. Saba's really cool really cool, but it doesn't necessarily have anywhere that it can go. 
I don't necessarily want to display it sitting down like this on the shelf the way that I do have the, the way that I have the dragon dagger. I just don't think it fits the same and I'd honestly like to move that dragon dagger too. I have a power sword and it's a good one and I would like it to be fully displayed, not just partially displayed. I want it hung on the wall like this. And I found a way to do it. A type of guitar hook system would work really well for this. Or, out in the garage, I got a couple of shelves. These shelves on the back of the, on the back of them, have a type of pegboard. And with the right pegs, I can hang all three of these items up, including my gold scepter, right out in the garage where I do my workouts. And what better place to have this stuff displayed, this iconic Ranger gear, when the fact that that's where I work out that's where I'm getting myself back in shape. And in terms of getting myself back in shape, in terms of taking care of myself, it's good to have inspiration. Isn't that pretty decent inspiration? It's not a bad idea to have some of that stuff out there. And it's also not a bad idea out in that area since we're going to make that a secondary recording studio where we can all have a little more space and I can finally dedicate this entire room to my collection at large. If I'm going to do that, then it's going to need some style. It's going to need some stuff that puts it a little bit above normal garage space. And so, with that in mind, so here we are. This is it. This is what I'm talking about. These shelves out here. I have about three or four of these sitting out here, and they all have this type of pegboard that's going on behind me. So my guess is that if I'm right, I should be able to put that here just like that, probably go about four over, probably like that. And if I'm lucky, and I did not measure it out right, you can see that. So let's try this again. Let's move it down, about right there, about right here. And of course, anytime you set up something new, you have to play with it a bit. But there we go. If I do this right, Every single one of these items I can get onto a shelf like this and have them displayed out in the open like this. And if I want to, if I really want to mess with it, I could put the pegs low enough and put two pegs up here for support and I could get the sword to sit upright. But I think I could also get it, if I messed around with it enough, to get it to sit long ways on there with the proper pegs and I can have it displayed like this. The point that I'm making is that I think it's an endless possibility that just because of the, just because of the kind of shelving that I have right now, I happen to have this sitting in my garage. When I moved in, there were four of these shelves. And for the longest time, I've made no real use of them because all of my tools and things of that nature are in toolboxes and things and they're inside my utility room, not in my garage. My garage is primarily used for my boxing and things of that nature. It's where I keep my heavy bag and my weights and things of that nature that have been out here in the garage. And if I'm gonna bring the soundboard out here and we're gonna turn it into a small little makeshift studio where the show, the bigger show, cause I, I'm on fandom night, uh, most of the people that have been on this channel long enough know that I do a lot of stuff with Fandom Night. We film in person. We film with the soundboard and all the equipment. It'd be nice to be out here, spread out, sit back and do the show. That's our intention, is to move the show out here. If I'm doing that, part of my collection is going to end up out here as well. And I think that this is the way to display the weapons. Just a small collection update. That's all this video was, was to say, hey, space is always messing with you and you've always got to reevaluate your collection, bring things into the collection and bring things out of the collection. Now the next video, we'll be back to unboxing things because I have a lot of stuff that has to go up on the shelf 
And at some point, we're also going to go through the boxes, the four boxes I've been talking about, and start breaking down some of that collection. And we have other things coming up as well. We need to go through the Nintendo collection. We need to go through the Super Nintendo collection, the Sega Genesis collection, all the old games that I still have, and kind of talk about what stays, what goes, what's important, what's not important. It's all coming on this show in due time. I'm very interested for where this continues to take us because, well, I love collecting. That's, that's true. And ever since I started moving the show in a direction where I can just talk about the collection and the stuff that I want to talk about, I've been much happier doing this show. And I think that it's shown. I really do. So stick with me. We got a lot more stuff to cover. We get out of here. I have spoken. Take what you will from it.